Alright, hello everyone, my name is Shep, welcome back to the Butcher Circus. Today, we are going to be doing something a little bit different. So, I kind of realized that in the um, latest videos, I haven't really felt the need to even explain the trinkets that I was bringing, because we've just been playing kind of the same teams a little bit too much. So today, we're going to be changing that up, and we are going to be doing an Occultist Mark team with a Shieldbreaker and no Arbalist, no Crusader, no Abomination, none of that nonsense, just a lot of characters that you usually don't see having a lot of fun. So I'm going to start off by actually going for quite a weird play for um, exposing that Abomination, because usually the best play here would be to like pull the Occultist or something. Another good play would have been to push him back, but I, I had an idea that I wanted to go for, and I do still want to go for it, so hopefully I don't get slammed to the back. I do get slammed to the back, but it's okay, because now we can go for the Sacrificial Stab, and sadly no crit. With 43% crit chance, we do not get a crit. Well, isn't that unlucky? But we are in a prime position to just take down this Abomination, because after you get that exposed, your crit chance is extremely high. If the character has a lot of dodge, you can go Vulnerability Hex, which is what my Occultist has right now. And uh, we can take it from there. So Occultist has Monkey Spawn, Sacrificial Chris. The Chris is for your stamp to actually mark and to be really powerful. It's a really nice trinket, and it marks for 4 rounds, which is, you know, like a, a usual mark. The monkey spawn gives you a lot of dodge, gives you a lot of accuracy, makes the occultist a little bit tankier, and it's very much necessary for him. And uh, you will have the choice between either going vulnerability hex or going with uh, with the stab. So the stab here crucial to make sure that our houndmaster would actually do enough damage. And here's when the houndmaster is just a lot better than the arbalist. Even if you get pulled, or well, we didn't get pulled in this case, but even if we get disrupted to position two, and the opponent is in position one, we can still hit him for the entire health bar. Which is, uh, which is great, especially since we have Training Whistle and Eagle Eye Talisman, so we have a little bit extra damage to make sure that we can actually come through with that. So I'm going to drop a Caltrips here, so I start taking at the, at the heavy boys on my opponent's team. This Crusader and this Man Arms are going to be kind of a pain to deal with, but the Caltrips is slowly going to push them down. Uh, the Bell is also going to be kind of difficult to deal with, but the thing is, the Houndmaster and the Occultists actually have really good debuff resistances, so unlike other characters, they can actually do okay in the, in those situations. So right now I could go for an Expose to make my Vant Hunter be in a position to actually do what he wants, or I could go for something else. Um, I wish I could daze that Occultist or something. I think the play here is actually going to be to go for a stun. I'm going to go for a stun on this Crusader to make sure that the Oh, to make sure that he doesn't get a heal or something like that, but that's not a great outcome. So, 80% chance of getting that stun, sadly we do not get it, which means we're gonna have a pretty hard time getting the kill this round. I don't think it's actually gonna happen, but we're still gonna try our best, right? We, we do have to try our best. Right now, I think that uh, Holy Lance hurts a whole lot less than Zealous. Uh, there isn't a command buff, but it's still gonna hurt a lot, so I'm just gonna drop a pull onto this occultist to make sure he gets disrupted a little bit. So this is kind of the problem with, paying, with playing um, not super efficient mark teams that sometimes you're going to have a bit of a hard time, because we're playing against a team that has three healers and the mana arms to use guard uh, potentially too. So the Abomination can detransform heal himself, the occultist can heal him, the Crusader can heal him, just a lot of defending characters that you have to deal with. That uh, makes things a little bit difficult, but I do still think we are more than fine in this match. We can very well still win this. Uh, I think the play here is actually going to be to move forward with our Bounty Hunter, believe it or not. Yeah, we are going to have to move forward here. I'm going to move to position 2, so I can actually start using my finish hymns again. And uh, let's see how my opponent reacts to that. If they go for the Crusade right now with the Holy Lance, that means you won't have Rally to the Flame, which means the Abomination is definitely going to go for a... Uh, uh, for a self-heal after that, because he doesn't want to die, right? I do go first every single round, because we got quite lucky to go first round one. So, we are just gonna take it from there. Please don't crit. Oh, that is lucky, okay. We get uh, the 20% dodge chance, and uh, that's definitely not a crit. We got Masochistic here, so say goodbye to the Monkey Spell dodge. But there's a few things you can do right now. I'm thinking... Um Going for a vulnerability hex wouldn't be too bad. If I get a crit, he get, he goes to a heart attack, or like he gets afflicted. 
Oh, we don't get a crit. Come on, look at that crit chance. It's insane. He's still gonna get afflicted though. So we could actually have a really good time here. Because now once he clicks, he's an abomination, he's gonna get afflicted, he's gonna de-transform. And um maybe, 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 maybe a nah, abusive isn't gonna do that much of a difference, but Maybe he went selfish past, something like that, you know, there was always a chance that we can get uh, something cool like that. So having a shield breaker means that you actually have like kind of a stress alternative, kind of, very much kind of. But yeah, we will see how it goes. Right now I think my play is to... just dealing with these characters is so difficult, but we have more actions than they do, kind of. So we can go for, uh, for more attacks here. Look at that, 45% crit chance and we're not getting a single crit. It was a 39, a 39, a 45 or something. I think the only character that crit was actually the bounty hunter with the Caltrus, because that always crits for some reason. But yeah, our offense should technically be a lot better than what it is looking like right now. That's going to be a rally to the flame. That's 7 damage, actually. That's a little bit too much for my taste. Uh, that rally to the flame actually heals for quite a bit. Well, in response to that, I think I'm going to go for... A stab, right? Um, does Shieldbreaker do enough damage? I really hope Puncture does 7. 4 to 8, it doesn't do enough damage. 5 to 9, <laughs> it doesn't do enough damage. Uh, I'm gonna go for a Pierce because Puncture doesn't do enough. And then um, the thing is, what I meant by going with the Shieldbreaker first rather than the Occultist is that I'm scared that the uh, enemy Occultist goes for a really big heal, but now he can just guard, and I think, I think he knows he can guard. Uh, if he guards, there isn't much I can do apart from going Puncture by the start of the next round. And yeah, he's gonna go for that guard. And uh, I kind of just use my only character that's able to break those guards. But not all is lost because there's still a lot of damage that we can do here. I can go for a sacrificial stab on the occultist and take it from there. Uh, do I want to do that? What do I really want to do? I could go for vulnerability X. I could go for a pull and then uh, use the stab. That's also an idea. Plus 25% stress dealt versus marked. Uh, pull on the occultist. Pulling the occultist wouldn't be too bad of an idea, actually, just so he doesn't disrupt me too much. And yeah, in position one, he can't really do all that much, so that's nice. And if you get getting the occultist out of the match is very important, because like it's an occultist, you usually want to get him out early. It's gonna weaken in curse on my doggy, gets a crit out of it, so that's more damage to and that's definitely gonna be the affliction. Abusive. Oh, I called it! Alright, alright, I called the abusive. So that's plus 20% damage, that's really gonna synergize with the Training Whistle on Eagle Eye Talisman. Like, Training Whistle is actually kind of insane, because it gives you plus 30% damage, believe it or not. It doesn't even look like it, but it's kind of insane how much damage it gives you. I'm gonna go for a stab right now, it's just gonna reapply the mark and do some damage to that occultist. So, well, I was hoping that the Chris would make me do more damage than that, but what can you do? That's actually potentially very, very risky. Because he's going to go aggressive, but then I'm going to have a 50-50 of getting the kill with the Shield Breaker. Because we do have Monkey Spawn and the Finisher. The Finisher, she's like the support Finisher character of this team. You usually want to have both Finishers in a damage team, because if your opponent just decides to focus on your Bounty Hunter, then you won't be able to kill characters. And you don't want that to happen, you want to be able to kill characters. It's actually going to be a rage. That's going to drop us to death's door, but I don't think that um, we are in as much risk as the Abomination is, because now we can go for a 50-50. If we get it, we are chilling. If we don't get it, it's going to be pretty rough, because then there's going to be another D-Transform, but none of that's going to happen, because we just take that 50-50. So my opponent took a very big gamble there, uh, but so did I, because my own Occultus is now at 0 HP, and actually getting pretty close to a heart attack. Don't forget Monkey's Paws plus stress taken too, so yeah, he's not doing too well. Uh, actually, Men at Arms bellow immediately. I'm not sure that's the play, because uh, I can heal myself now with this Occultist. Yeah, and I, I think that's exactly what I'll do. If I get a crit heal right now for a lot of HP, oh, that just means I'm dead. So <laughs> healing myself here was actually... Uh, is actually just gonna quicken my Occultist's death, because there doesn't even need to be a Holy Lance. A Weakening Curse right now and I'd probably be dead, so there really isn't much I can do about it. It's gonna be a crit for 21, also I don't have the Guard Dog on my Hound Master, because I felt like the stun would have been more helpful. It would have been more helpful, but it failed on the Crusader, so what can I do? Right now, one thing I can do is push the pressure away from my Occultist, 
by hitting into the enemy occultist. So we're gonna go for that Hunt Rush and hit, uh, hit him pretty hard. Now he's forced to go for a self heal. He does have the plus healing skills crit buff, so he could heal for a lot, but he could also heal for zero. You never know. It's a percentage base, uh, percentage base uh, buff, but yeah, that's gonna be a pretty big heal. There's still four rounds of mark on that. I don't have any plus damage versus marks. In fact, I have minus damage. So I only do 5 to 9. Is it still worth it to go for that, or should I pull the mana up to make sure there isn't a Zealous? Because a Zealous right now is is really going to hurt, and uh, I don't want to hurt, actually. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather not. Uh, preventing the enemy Crusader from going Zealous in a stress team is uh, always the right play, if you can do that. I'm just hoping that my doggy will be able to do enough of a minus 60% damage, I don't know. We're definitely gonna die here, that's 200 stress, the occultist is now gone. But we can start going for some aggressive plays. Abusive, I need you to pull through for me, 12 to 24, that's enough, alright. So Houndmaster, just being able to hit into position 1 with this Hound's Rush is insane. It's uh, unlike the Yarbles, it also applies a bleed. Uh, it doesn't have as much crit chance, but its accuracy base is only 90. That's its biggest downside. That the accuracy base is just pretty garbo. I think right now I'm gonna go for a very weird play because I don't think, as we saw, Puncture does like four to seven. So actually, did it do four to seven against Prot? No, it was against zero Prot. He doesn't have Prot. So I'm gonna go for a very weird play. I'm gonna go for finish him first because that does seven to fourteen. And 7 to 14 is much more likely to actually get the character down to 0 HP than 4 to 7. Like, I need a crit. And now you can't card anymore because I still have Puncture and I, it's just gonna be uh, Electric Boogaloo right now if you decide to go for another guard. I'll just go for another Puncture because uh, Shield Breaker is gonna have two kills on her belt if I do that. I don't think I'm gonna Puncture since there wasn't a guard. I'm gonna go Expose instead. And that's gonna be a death blow 50 50, and we take it. Chillbreaker's feeling great here, but overall, not all is one, because that's still two very healthy characters, one of them with a silver syringe, both of them very high in protection, and of course, Houndmaster does have bleeds to deal with protection, but the bleeds aren't big, and unlike the Arbalist, we do not have an armor-piercing trinket, we just don't have a chance of uh, having an armor-piercing trinket. One thing we do have, though, is Pierce. Pierce could actually be very helpful here. I definitely think we need to focus on the Crusader first, because Rally to the Flame is just a pain to deal with. So I'm going to start off by going for a Pierce on him. So 6 to 11, we roll for that 11, that's great. Maybe we should have done Expose. Expose was also an idea. I think I should have done Expose, actually. I could have gone Expose into Uppercut or, or something like that. Uh, probably would have been a better idea, but what can I do? Oh, actually, I only have come hither on this bounty hunter because I actually had the, the occultist as the marking character, so I can't even mark right now. I can't mark too well. So I think I'm just going to pull that uh, mana arms. Let's keep in mind that the occultist signed round 5. I feel like that's going to be very useful information for us. And I think we're going to focus up mana arms instead. He only has 10 prot rather than 35, so... Yeah, I think it's a pretty obvious choice. Look at that. Minus 80% damage. Minus 80% damage. And we're still doing 10 to 20. That is insane. How is that even possible? Okay. Plus 100% from selected skill. Hounds Rush. It gives you 100% damage, not 50 like the Arbalist. Plus 20 from Affliction, plus 40 from Trinket. Yeah, that's brutal. 10 to 20. We roll for 20. That's half your health bar with four Bellow debuffs on my character. It is insane how much damage the doggy can actually do. And, uh, you know, since there isn't too much protection, we can still do a lot of damage. If I got a crit there, the Hound Master, I mean, the Mana Arms probably would have been at this store right now. It's gonna be a Holy Lance, I'm gonna drop, and I think right now the obvious play is to just go for Lickloons before anything bad happens. We Lickloons, we heal, we regen, and we just uh, we just take it from there. There is a play in puncturing that corpse, but I really don't think that is a, a viable play for us right now. The most viable play is gonna be to dodge this battle debuff. Yes, there we go, that's exactly what I wanted to see. And now we are gonna go for a kill. With only minus 20% damage, we should be able to do enough. Oh, just barely enough to take down that Man at Arms to 0 HP. And now the Bounty Hunter should be able to get a death blow. So the Shield Breaker is gonna go Hopeless. That's not a great affliction to get. It's yeah, I hope this is a pretty bad affliction, but what can you do? Abusive doesn't have a chance of moving back, doesn't have a chance of passing, so it's a really decent affliction to get on this team, I suppose. 
and now we can just use our bounty hunter to go for the finish him and take that kill. Unless we do zero damage for some bizarre reason, which I don't think would happen, the man arms would need way more prot than what he has for us to deal zero damage, and we would need to be fearful rather than abusive. Uh, in the current way that the game was, I don't think that would be possible. So we have a Crusader with full health, uh, I mean not full health, he's like third, uh, two thirds of his health bar, he has 35% protection with the Pit Fighter's Helm plus stress dealt, and Silver Syringe, it isn't going to do anything for him, but he still has those buffs. And I have three afflicted characters, but my opponent just surrenders here because against three characters, it's really difficult to take a W. So let's move on to a match number two and see how this team holds up again. Alright, and here we go, on to a match number two, this time against a Darkest opponent. We just earned our Darkest one rank, and we definitely want to keep it. And it looks like they are playing their own variation of Shep Stress. Wow, this is an interesting variation of Shep Stress, okay. This looks like a very defensive uh, way of playing uh, my team, actually. Yeah, it's not even the same team anymore. There's Suffer, there's Crusader with Brass, Bugle and Gloria Standard to deal with the stress. Like, okay, I like what I'm seeing. Unmaster with 40 prot plus 20 from the Blark of Light. Like, wow. There's some difficult stuff to deal with right here. I think that first things first, we go for an uppercut on Crusader. That's what you always do when you see a Crusader. You just punch him because it feels good. <laughs> it does feel good. You push him to the back, you daze him, you prevent Blark of Light from coming through, you prevent him from doing any of the moves that he wants, and you just take it from there. So, my opponent definitely... Actually, I think I know who this might be. I think this is one of my subscribers. I'm not entirely sure, because there is someone that just keeps uh, talking about Gloria's standard and using these stress healing abilities. I think his name is Irpan Fauzi or something like that. Uh, I don't know. It, it, the name doesn't sound too familiar here, but it might be the same person. Usually people have different names and um, in their YouTube and on their Steam. So, right now there's 20 prot over there, that's still not impossible to deal with. Uh, definitely focusing down the Houndmaster first is the best play. This flagellant isn't too scary, but if the thing is, if I go for a mark right now, I think we all know what's gonna happen, right? I'm gonna go for the mark with the stab instead, just so I do something, but oh, that was a mistake, I should have gone for the vulnerability hex. I kind of knew that the accuracy wouldn't be great, but I still wanted to go for that risk just so I'd get some damage through on that on that Houndmaster. I already knew there would be a Suffer to remove that uh, that mark anyway, but yeah, probably not uh, not my greatest day going for that play. Okay, right now we have to do something here. I think I could actually use Houndseri better than my opponent right now, because I do have more accuracy and I have a crit chance like crazy. But first we're gonna focus someone down. We are gonna focus. Who are we gonna focus? Man Arms is gonna be a pain to deal with too. I think I'm actually gonna pierce some Man Arms. I might start focusing him down because he doesn't have any protection. He doesn't have the Pit Fighter Sam or anything, but he does have the Insignia of Rank to apply those battle debuffs. And those battle be debuffs are gonna be a pain to deal with. There isn't any plus accuracy, but wow, that flash one still hits my, my cultist despite the snuff and no extra accuracy. That's really lucky for him. What can I do? Uh, without there being a mark, I feel like going Hound's Area is just better here. We're gonna hit uh, three out of four characters. We get a crit, but we don't even bleed. Okay, that's quite annoying. Even with the one ten percent bleed base chance, uh, yeah, like, I just don't know uh, what can I do, right? It's gonna be, oh, okay, the Crusader is just gonna keep healing like a maniac. Yeah, he's, he's gonna heal like he's mindless. He has this Gloria standard. He's fine with staying in that position, I suppose. I'm gonna go for a mark right now. It's gonna be really difficult for us to take down this Man Arms, but we're gonna go ahead and do it. We get a crit for 14 right there. Finally, the Sacrificial Chris and uh, the very high crit chance of the snap pulling uh, pulling up for us and um, just shaving a big health amount of um, of that Man Arms. Now there's probably gonna be a Suffer just so there isn't a mark on the MAA. But even then, I, I still think I can keep focusing down. Yeah, there's gonna be a Suffer. I could change focus onto the Flagellant. That is actually an idea, but there's still a Guard Dog. There's still a heal. Actually, Guard Dog might not do too much, but there's still a heal. So even if I go Hound's Rush and get a crit for his entire health bar, uh, it probably wouldn't matter. It probably wouldn't matter all that much. I mean, there would be a heal, then I would go Pierce. Who goes first, actually? I do. I'm gonna go for it. 
Okay, we don't do enough damage. I was hoping to get a 25% crit to just uh, take out that flagellant right there and then. But sadly, fate would not have it that way. So we just have to keep on going with this uh, with this idea. There's actually going to be a defender from the Man at Arms, really. Okay, yeah, he doesn't want to lose that flash, I can see. Uh, he isn't tased, so he's probably going to be able to heal by the start of next round, however he wants. I could go for a puncture right now and then I finish him and uh, just force a heal out of the um, out of the Crusader. I think that's going to have to be my play. It's kind of a weird one, but yeah, we're we're focusing this flash one down a little bit hard, and we're gonna see how that works. Goes for the Houndmaster first, definitely the best play. You choosing to just react with that Crusader because that's what the healing character is best for. If you do have that heal, you can wait until your opponent attacks before you actually react. So there's gonna be a crit with that Hound Sari. That's difficult to deal with. And yeah, even if I go for a finish him right now, the flange is just going to heal the other characters and it's not going to do anything. So I'm going to go for this instead and uh, just start taking away at the enemy team. So it is difficult to clutch out a kill with this team, it, it appears, especially when there's a lot of healing characters and there's a lot of uh, difficult... Wait, this isn't Chef Stress, there's a freaking cultist. What am I... Uh, I mean, there's a freaking Crusader. The, yeah, there's no Abomination. I just saw the setup with the Flagellant and, uh, and the Doggy and I was like, yeah, Chef Stress. No, it isn't, it isn't. Uh, my bad. Uh, right now, we... Uh, what do I do? What do I do? I think I'm actually going to go for... for exposed so I actually get some more crits here. I could uh, actually, yeah, I'm gonna go for a bit of a weird one. I'm gonna go for an expose on this flagellant. It's gonna take him down to zero and it's gonna force him to heal, but no! The, the debuff didn't apply! That's so annoying! Oh, I hate how exposed only has a 100% chance, because you're never gonna take your EI on, on the shield breaker. Because you need, you need the dodge, right? I mean, taking finisher is already a big risk. Oh, and he's smart. He goes for the rally to the flame first. Yeah, he is smart. He is indeed smart. Uh, the flashlight's going to take down to zero anyway, though, so we can still make something out of this. I think the play right now is to go for another sacrificial strap, a stamp, give me another crit. No crit, sadly, but now there's Sprout on that mana arm, so it's going to be a little bit more difficult to deal with, but we can manage. We can definitely manage. I actually cleared uh, the can't be guarded debuff, but still guard, yeah, and guards anyway. Uh, immediately, and this is not a position where you want to be in because Flagellant can just go redeem whenever he wants, and the uh, Men Arms is gonna stay like perfectly alive. So, this is a rough spot that we put ourselves in. 4 to 8 damage, yep, yeah. yeah, I don't think so. I'm gonna go with that Hound Sammy instead and just um, try flipping the tables on my opponent with the DOT here because we have Caltrops and we have Hound Sari. So we can definitely do a lot of DOT, and we can pierce the protection with the shield breaker, so we should be able to break through eventually. That Hound Sari, the offense from the Hound Sari isn't too scary because there's no Crimson Hook, there hasn't been any command buffs. So I, I could definitely be more scared than what I am right now, and I'm just going to go for a come hitter on the doggy so he doesn't have Luke Loons, and so the Flagellant is in position too, which could come in handy. It could, could come in handy. Uh, it would definitely come more in handy if I had an Arbalist, because I'd be limited to hitting position 2 uh, and all that, but yeah. Flagellant definitely has to go for a heal right now, I have Shieldbreaker with Puncture and Finisher, so there is no world where you don't heal. But even with your heal, I think my play is just to keep focusing down this flash right now. I'm probably gonna go for a Puncture, right? Or I could do something else. How much damage do I do to this character? 8 to 14, 8 to 14, 8 to 14, stab, uh, I, I don't know about that. I'm going to go for a puncture on the flash. I'm, I'm going to keep focusing him down. We're going to take the flash one out of the match and take my opponent's uh, biggest and strongest character out early. I think that's going to be the play. It's going to take a while, it's going to take a lot of effort, but we will be able to do it. I actually goes Defender on the doggy. I think I think he's pretty scared for that doggy because I could have always gone Hound's Rush or something, but yeah just decides to do that. Right now I don't have a lot of actions to, to kill this flash, so, but I, I definitely still need a mark, so I'm gonna have to go for a sacrificial stab right now. I'm gonna go for it, we roll for kind of a, an average roll, but the problem right now is that the Houndmaster is gonna act, he's gonna go Hound Sari, then I'll go Hound's Rush, there'll be a heal, then I don't even need to go finish him, I can go for another disrupting play, and then there'll be another heal. 
but yeah, uh, the other heal will have to be redeemed because I'm, I'm not going to let him exsanguinate. And a redeem right now isn't really going to do too much for him, so I still think this is actually a good spot for us. We're going to drop this Hound's Rush right now. Oh, crit 34. That's lovely. That is lovely. And that's going to mean that our, our bleed chance is actually going to go up soon, which is nice too. But we are running out of time. My characters is, are dropping closer to zero, and they are halfway to their first affliction. So now there's going to be a rally to the flame that cures the Campy Guard the debuff, but I'm not too, too concerned about it. Now I'm going to go for a pull on that mana arms, confirmed pull chance because of the grappling mids, and the flagellant's going to drop to zero HP without any character that he wants to heal. So he isn't going to heal the other characters because he drops to zero HP because he's already dropped to zero this round, but he's forced to go for a redeem right now because if he doesn't, I go finish him and you die. So he drops that redeem and heals himself for 15, but he's still marked for a while, which means that right now I can click my doggy again and go for another Hunt's Rush. So 13 to 26 damage. We'd have to get very unlucky not to do enough uh, against that. And now there are no more, no more redeems on your side. Even if you go for a heal, I can just respond with a puncture or with a stab, anything I want. And then I should be able to get a kill with the finish him. So we are going to take down this flagellant. I'm going to go for a stab first, actually. I am going to go for a stab first because I don't trust puncture to do 8 damage. And I can't use my shield breaker action. Um, I can't use my shield breaker action before either of these two because they, then they can just guard and prevent me from healing at all. So we're going to do that and we're going to take it from there. So the flagellant being dazed also very useful here because now, let's see, does he actually guard? Does he actually want to guard? He does. He does want to guard against the shield breaker with puncture. That is insane. That is insane that you want to guard that. Because do you still have a chance of survival? I'm going to say no, because I puncture. It's a 35% chance. If I had taken that there, I would have been wonderful. But since there's still a daze, now I can just go for a finish him. And that was just kind of trading your man at arms action for my shield breaker action. But making sure that I actually get the death vote about Hunter, because my death vote chance wasn't 100, it was actually a 90. So if I had failed at 90, my opponent would have been very happy there. But that's going to be one of my characters dropping to this store, and uh, the other ones are coming too. So yeah, that's no, that's not wonderful. This is going to heal all the enemy characters, but the Crusader isn't in a position to do anything aggressive. And now we're going to focus on that Hound Master like no tomorrow. So keep in mind, Flagellant died round 5, and we are going to keep going from there. We are just going to keep going. Alright, 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 alright. Takes a while to pass turns, maybe our connection isn't the greatest. Maybe my opponent is from very far away, I'm not sure. I, I've never played against them before. Or maybe I have, maybe I have. The name doesn't sound too unfamiliar. It's actually going to be a command buff this time, deciding not to bellow, okay. But yeah, the play here is definitely to focus on that Hound Master. I don't care what happens, we have to we have to kill him this round or the next, uh, for sure. So I think the play might be to click this um, click this Occultist and go for a Vulnerability Hex right now. Vulnerability Hex is going to remove the little dodge there is, and it's going to allow us to do some very nasty stuff. So it doesn't remove the prod, we, uh, Vulnerability Hex is against dodge, not against, uh, not against protection. But yeah, that Hound Master is not in a position where he wants to be in, because I'm going to go for Hound's Rush and uh, hopefully do a lot of damage. So let's see. Hound Master, Hound's Harry, please don't get too many kills. Okay, didn't get a single kill, so that's great. We're going to go afflicted. Give me abusive again. Come on, I want that abusive. We get irrational. Oh, not irrational. That's the worst. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay, it's not the worst. Fearful would have been worse, uh, even worse here. But no, I'm... I'm I did a mistake right there, I jinxed it. Fearful would not have been worse, Irrational just, just passes, which means that right now the Hound Master is gonna stay alive. Actually goes for an inspiring cry to make sure that the doggy doesn't uh, doesn't go afflicted or anything. And we're gonna we're about to have three characters at that store. The doggy needs to go. Like the doggy needs to go yesterday. It's not even funny how much he needs to go. I think the play is gonna be either an expose or a puncture or a pierce. Let's see, six to eleven, that isn't enough. 3 to 6, but then finish him can actually get crits. I think I go for 3 to 6 here. No crit, please debuff. Okay, we do apply the debuff. Come on, finish him. I need you to do some serious damage right now. And I mean serious damage. Finish him, go for that 6 to 11. Oh, we don't take... We do min roll. It's not a crit. It's not a max roll. 
It's just a mineral, that sucks so much. Okay, but uh, actually the Man at Arms goes first and goes for a Defender. That's potentially not the greatest move, because now I just puncture and that's a free action for me and free damage too. 30% crit chance, still no crit! I, I thought I applied an exposed debuff. I mean, did I? I'm, I'm not entirely sure anymore. There's still a command buff on that doggy, there's still an attack whistle. He can hit all our characters pretty reliably. He has plus 32 accuracy for that uh, Hans Ari, so he has 117 right now, and uh, 117, I think, uh, doesn't hit these two 100% chance, hits you 100% chance. Actually, does it? Yeah, it does. But uh, the hit chances are still great, so he's probably going to go for it. Yeah, I mean, for sure. There's no world where you don't hound Sarah here. Please don't get killed. That's two kills. That is two kills. That is two kills too much. I could have dealt with one kill, maybe on the shield worker, and still had my Houndmaster action. But right now, I don't think I am in any position to actually win this match. Is uh, the occultist is gonna have an act out marking the corpse? <laughs> oh, the occultist, why do you do this to me? And yeah, this uh, this isn't gonna be too much fun anymore because the bounty hunter. Well, even if I did 12 damage, which I think is very unlikely considering the last action, the crusader is still just gonna keep healing. He has that glorious standard. It's just gonna be brutal. And now, yeah, I, I roll for minimum again. And that's going to be a GG, we don't have to play this out because we know how it's going to play out, so GG to my opponent. I mean, when you meet a team like this, it has healing characters, it has a lot of defense, like even having a shield breaker, the guards are still impactful and just the amount of HP and the amount of prod there's around and the amount of healing just means that a team that isn't fully optimized or can't deal with, uh, can't deal with this all that well just isn't going to have a great time. So I hope you all enjoyed the matches, and uh, we are going to lose our darkest one rank, but such is the way of the Butcher Circus. There is no justice, my people. There is no justice in this world, but I will see you again another time. Cheers.